Good evening, everyone. My name is Yakima Fleming Palmer. I hope everyone's having a great day today. I am a certified wellness coach, a certified cannabis educator, a healthcare professor, and also a member of the Medical Advisory Board. In this presentation that I will present for you today, you will understand the following. What are fibroids? Factors that increase a woman that increase for a woman, a woman, various types of fibroids, symptoms that one can have, and the treatment. I'd like to start this out with a quote from Dr. Joe Dispenza. We can learn in a state of pain and suffering or we can evolve in a state of joy and inspiration. Most embrace the former to go with the latter. We just have to make up our minds that change will probably entail a bit of discomfort, some inconvenience, a break from a predictable routine and a period of not knowing. What are fibroids? Fibroids are muscular tumors that grow in the wall of a uterus. Another medical term for fibroids is also called lioma or myomas. Fibroids are almost always benign. Fibroids can grow as a single tumor or there can be many of them in the uterus. They can be small as an apple seed or as big as a grapefruit. In usual cases, they can become very large, very large. And I'm sure some women have experienced um, big size fibroids and some have smaller sizes as well. If you or someone you know is dealing with fibroids, one may experience painful cramps, heavy bleeding, uncomfortable bloating, lack of energy, and other unpleasant symptoms. And they can be a nightmare. Here you will see a picture of on the right hand side, well on the left hand side shows a female's anatomy of her fallopian tubes, her ovaries, the uterus, the cervix and the vagina. On the right hand side, you'll see how the fibroids can attach to the uterus and the uterine arteries. In the white, well a little, um, beige area, you'll see how big the fibroids can be and how they attach to either the artery or the inside lining of the uterus. About 20% to 80% of women develop these fibroids by the time they reach the age of 50. Fibroids are most common in women in their 40s and early 50s, and not all women with fibroids do have symptoms. Women who do have symptoms often find themselves um, not able to um, uh, enjoy the discomfort that they have with those fibroids. Some have pain and heavy menstrual bleeding. Fibroids can put pressure on the bladder and also cause frequent urination or the rectum causing some type of rectal pressure. Should the fibroids get very large, they can cause abdominal pain and actually enlarge, making the woman's um, abdominal area look like she's pregnant. Here are some factors that increase a woman's risk of having fibroids. Age makes a big difference in a woman having fibroids. They typically start around the age of 30 and 40 years old through menopause and after menopause they sometimes shrink family history can also play a role having a family member with fibroid increases their risk if a woman's mother had fibroids her risk of having them might be three times average um, or higher your ethnic origin, of course, African American women are more likely to develop these than women, um, white women. 
If you're obese, women who are overweight have a higher risk of developing these fibroids. For heavy women, is a risk for two to three times of their um, average risk of developing those two. And also, and finally, your eating habits make a big difference on having fibroids. Eating a lot of red meat, beef, pork is linked to higher um, rates of fibroids and eating plenty of green vegetables seem to help protect the woman from developing these and also getting bigger. In this slide, you will see three types of fibroids and where they are located. On the on my right hand side, you'll see the submucosal, which is a area inside the uterine wall. And those uh, grow inside the uterus. There they it's one called type one and also a type two. You'll also see an intramural fibroid that's within the uterus wall, and those grow next to the muscle of the uterus. The last one is called a subserosal, and that's under the parametrium, and that's outward from the uterus and the pelvic cavity. Because submucosal fibroids go just beneath the inner lining of the uterus, they often cause more bleeding problems for a woman than other fibroids. And because they crowd the uterine space and they can cause lots of symptoms, even if they're very small. Submucosal fibroids are the most likely to lead to pregnancy and a woman having ferti fertility problems. And people with mucosal fibrosis sometimes experience heavy menstrual pain and long periods. The risk factors here are high levels of estrogen and progesterone for some women that are breastfeeding pregnant or have um, are going through perimenopause uh, symptoms. And also the null perious individuals and those are people that have never been pregnant or have given birth. As you can see at the bottom, the treatment now. The treatment of a uterine artery embolization, I've actually had this procedure done because I too suffer from fibroids. And this is when um, a person has this procedure, they put teeny particles like grains of sand that are injected into the blood vessels that lead to the uterus. So it's supposed to cut off the blood supply to the uterus so that the fibroids can shrink. The next treatment is an MRI guided focus ultrasound. And that ultrasound is um, when they put pulses that heat up um, onto the, uh, to the uh, fibroid tumor so that they can burn them off. The next procedure is a surgical remover of, of the tumor where they can actually remove the fibroid tumor. A woman can have a hysterectomy or also and get on, have medications to help with those fibroids. So what we have here and what you just learned are fibroids are accumulation of excess mucus and toxins that are in our womb as a woman. Fibroids can heal naturally using herbs and natural medicine. There is a very strong connection between our colon health and the womb. The colon is a major channel of elimination. And if toxins are not eliminated through the colon, those same toxins can be transferred into our womb. As I have here are, is the um, flat belly lifestyle three, three, phase three 21 day cleanse. And with this cleanse, it will help a female actually cleanse her body from all the toxins and waste to get rid of the waste to actually help shrink and cleanse the colon, the uterus, and um, help with those fibroids. The um, 
Because a woman can't experience lots of pain, I also find that using the topical CBD cream along with a heating pad, and for me, when I have bad times with my fibroids, when they get very painful, I find that using this Dr. Rita's powerful full spectrum pain cream, you rub it onto that area and put a heating pad actually helps with some of the pain. And I layer that also with the Wakana Hemp MD um, topical, not topical, but uh, sublingual and use a couple of drops three times a day to layer my pain and help alleviate some of that um, pain that I may be experiencing. And this is my presentation on uh, fibroids. Uh, my name again is Yakima. My phone number is listed and my Facebook name if you have um, want to reach out to me. Does anyone have any questions? No questions? Give me one second, Yukima. That was excellent. I'm just walking into the hospital. Okay. And um, I think Doris Mosley has a question, but, you know, excellent presentation. If you could kind of go over that um, uh, product line on the okay. left, the flat belly lifestyle and the cleanse, that would be great. Yes, I found both of these, well, all three of these products to be great to help remove the waste from our colon and actually help with those fibroids, as well as using the pain green, cream really helps with the pain. someone say something hi hi how are you i'm great great presentation yakima thank you so much i appreciate that yeah so um i just have a couple of things to say i'm here at the dispensary with melissa and um so i just wanted to bring in the fact that um like you said Fibroids are an accumulation of waste and the body, the body actually uh, encapsulates those waste products to kind of protect us. Yes. And so the, um, that brings to mind for me the importance of our 21 day raw cleanse because uh, you mentioned which was great that uh, many times uh, poor diet, poor elimination can contribute to the, the, the buildup of those toxins. And so with our 21 day raw cleanse, the, um, the purifier actually cleanses out our digestive system. Um, and I call it from the rooter to the tutor because it, it uh, you know, kind of scrubs the lining of the intestines and gets out all of that old muckety gook that has been uh, uh, deposited on the lining of our intestines for years and years and years. I mean, we still have poop in us <laughs> yes. from sometimes from childhood because most times or many people don't have uh, um, effective and complete elimination. Um, one problem that I have seen in uh, my nursing career has been uh, when people go to, for instance, to their doctor and they query about elimination and the person says, oh, you know, I go a couple of times a week or every other day or yikes, that, that kind of thing. I'm like, ah. <laughs> and then the, the doctor says, oh, well, if that's normal for you, then that's normal. No, that's not normal. You 
take it in. You're supposed to let it out. And if you don't, then your body is just circulating those toxins over and over and over again. And this is what your body is actually trying to make healthy new cells from. And it is just not going to happen. You can't make healthy cells from garbage. And so, um, so that is one of the, the, the great benefits of um, our 21-day cleanse, and specific the purifier. And then the other thing is um, uh, the eliminator, which helps to eliminate the mucus from our digestive system, which again slows the peristaltic waves that help to move the waste out of our body. Um, because again, we have all of this crap, uh, (laughs) I'm real graphic, crap, uh, caked on the lining of the intestines that in and of itself, again, slows that, that, that wave, that peristaltic wave that moves things out. And with the, um, the, the, the mucus that, covers the the villi in the intestines this inhibits the the absorption of nutrients that we get from our food so that uh you know we're not as nourished as we would think we would be with all the food that we eat because we're just not getting a lot of it. And then the parasites are probably eating before we do. So we we get even less. So Mm -hmm. that um, is another uh, um, reason that that particular aspect of the, uh, the cleanse is great for us. And then once we clean the, the digestive system, the intestines out and work at uh, eliminating that mucus and the parasites, then we can start to uh, to introduce or have more nutrients introduced into our system. Now it can get in. Um, and so that is the benefit of the regenerator, uh, the superfoods, because now that we've cleaned the lining and uh, eliminated the toxins, uh, opened the flow up in the intestines, which have have released their toxins and told the rest of the organs, okay, now let her rip, and everybody dumps their toxins out, then all the, all the organs and, and cells and tissues can now receive that, uh, those nutritionally dense um, uh, raw materials to nourish them and help to provide the materials to rebuild um, healthy new cells. So we, I mean, we just really cannot uh, uh, let it pass that this particular program is an excellent adjunct to um, the CBD, the um, the 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 program i guess you could say to begin uh removing the impediments so that those fibroids can be dissolved Mm -hmm. and eliminated from our bodies yes indeed you're right thank you so much dr betty for bring for breaking that down because you're so right these products will help eliminate that and to to cleanse out that womb and we need it Yes, definitely. And with that, even uh, uh, um, menstrual dis-ease, Ill, being ill at ease during the menses and that, that whole time around it, all of those things will even be uh, lessened. Uh, the cramps, the, the um, abnormal bleeding, and all of those kinds of things would would be decreased and or eliminated because right. now we've cleaned out the toxins, the inflammation, the mucus, and now those, those uh, um, tissues are being nourished. And 
this even enhances the the effectiveness of our our tinctures yeah. our CBD tinctures which actually um, relieve the inflammation and allow us to manipulate the uh, endocannabinoid system and bring it back into balance so that it can uh, modulate and regulate all the other systems, including the reproductive system um, and the digestive system. And so, uh, you know, it's just a win-win. It just makes everything work in tandem so much better and so much more effectively. You're right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Yakima. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Rita. Yes, yes, this Doris, is... I'm getting to you. You can Hi, ask Dr. Rita. Question. Yes, yes. Ask question. I, you know what? I just want to make a, a couple of comments because eight years ago, my daughter was having a lot of challenges with her uterus and having the fibroids, which she ended up having the surgery. I wish all this information would have been around and the product would have been around at that time. But unfortunately, it wasn't. So she had to go through the surgeries and all of that. But she finally had a baby. That's why I said eight years ago, because that's how old her daughter is, which the doctors had told her she could never have a baby. But being a trichologist and have done a lot of research, and when you were saying that African-American women are, you know, really uh, bothered with this a lot, and that has been connected to fibroids has been connected to CCCA, which is central, the hair loss starting in the top, central, centrifugal, which starts to spread out, cicatricia, scar tissue, inflammation, alopecia. So uh, our hair powered hair oil has played a great part in that because I was diagnosed with CCCA and that's what I use. So it is connected. Dermatologists have found it to be connected to fibroids. So for you guys that are on the line, if you find yourself starting to thin in the top, you may want to get some uh, hemp-powered hair and start using it topically and under the tongue as a tincture. So great, great, great presentation. And thank you for that information. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doris. That is so true. Um, it brings me, Yakima, to a question that we have in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, the question's from Erica Zachary. Why do fibroids seem to be increasingly popular in African-American women? Is it related to diet and lifestyle? So African-American women, uh, one of my professors, I you know, did my residency at Cook County, but one of my professors from Rush did a study on why African-American women are predisposed to fibroids. And what they found in one study was that growth hormone was increased in African-American women. And that growth hormone increased the growth of these benign tumors, these fibroids. Yes, diet. Diet has a huge uh, effect on why African-American women have an increased incidence of fibroids, our diet, our lifestyle. So uh, with that being said, these products specifically, when we look at the analogy that Dr. Betty talked about, and she talked about intestinal brew, you know, when we have foods that are fried and processed and cooked. Uh, you add on the fact that as African-Americans, we like the barbecue and the charcoal. Um, we have a lot of issues with parasites. We have a lot of issues with toxicity. And food is not able to be moved out in a very efficient way. And many of my patients go to the bathroom maybe once or twice a week. That is not normal, right? So we have a lot of intestinal issues. We have leaky gut. We have toxins, parasites, and fibroids. 
So yes, growth hormone, diet, lifestyle, all of these play a huge effect on the fact that women of color tend to have fibroids. They tend to have large fibroid, fibroids. I've removed fibroids that were the size of full-born baby, a full-term baby. And they can be painful. They can cause painful sex. They can cause infertility. Um, and so this is where our CBD comes in, our extreme power pain cream that Yakima talked about, our, our tinctures. These reduce inflammation. They reduce pain. They help ease menstrual cycles and menstrual cramps and bleeding. So this was a phenomenal presentation, Yakima. Thank you for, for tying in our incredible products, our flat belly lifestyle, really helping men and women to have a diet that's not only plant-based, but really introducing juicing, yeah. introducing uh, fruits and vegetables that we don't eat enough of, mm -hmm. introducing the fact that food that's cooked and processed has very low nutrient um, benefits for our body and definitely will increase our risk uh, for fibroids if we are women of color. So thank you so much. I'm going to see if there's any other questions, Yakima. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I'm looking. And if you have a question, you can raise your hand if you're in the audience. Hey, Dr. Rita, this is Erica. I can add another question in. Yes, Erica. How Hi. are you? I'm good. I'm good. Great job, Yakima. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Thank so you. I have a question for you because I've been having a little, little challenge here. I've had several women. Um, two were clients. One was um, somebody else that we know. One, two of them were people that we know um, that were young women. They're trying to get them to um, understand that a lot of these things can be addressed in a different way by cleansing, by changing your lifestyle, by change, you know, uh, all the stuff that we know, right? Mm -hmm. But I've been having difficulty getting people to just show up to hear the information. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to get other people's experiences. Like I did have um, Sharon talk to two of my clients um, and she did a f fabulous job, but people are being told that lifestyle has nothing to do with it, that what they're eating has nothing to do with it. And it's just so frustrating to me because I hear it in so many other arenas. Um, but I'm just wondering, because fibroids is very new to me in terms of people experiencing them. Um, but I'm just trying to understand if I could be doing something or saying something differently. Um, I think what you're saying and what you're doing and the fact that you're exposing our product line um, is something you can continue to do. Uh, we have to be very careful, uh, a fine line where, you know, sure. not that person's ob -GYN. We don't know their full medical condition. Um, we don't know how large these fibroids are. Mm -hmm. uh, because honestly, there's some fibroids that have to be surgically removed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they come to be so large that they start pressing on our ureters. The ureters are the tubes that drain your kidney. And once they start pressing on the ureter, they can cause kidney failure. So mm -hmm. you never want to compromise someone who may have fibroids at that point that really need a surgical um, procedure done mm -hmm. so that they don't lose their kidneys. So continue mm -hmm. to expose, continue to share, um, continue to connect them with Sharon or me or Dr. Prince. And, um, and, I, and I think that's what that's the best thing. Yeah, got, <laughs> got it. We'll do. Of, it's just really I mean, sad every, when people don't everything, even have children. Everything, Erica, everything, every medical challenge is linked to your diet. 
Exactly. Every single one. I don't care if it's fibroids. I don't care if it's um, gout. Every single one is linked to your diet. Yep. So the answer is the same. <laughs> What's the answer? <laughs> Get on this 21 day challenge. And cleanse. And it's cleanse. so important. I mean, it's, it's the same answer. Yep. I mean, as a physician, I know that my colleagues don't understand what the answer is. Their answer is to give you medication or their answer is to jump to surgery. Yep. <laughs> and it's your diet in yep. every single condition. So you can't go wrong. If you're talking to someone that has fibroids or talking to someone who has gout, talking to someone who has depression, someone who's anxious, someone who has lupus or multiple sclerosis, you can't go wrong. It's the same answer. It's your diet. Yep. And so, once you change the diet, then other things will start falling into place. Wonderful. Let's see. Thank you so much, Erica, for chiming in and Dr. Betty and Doris. I appreciate you. Our audience is awfully quiet. <laughs> They're awfully quiet. Uh, you can raise your hand uh, if you have a question or you can put it right there in the chat. But if not, Yakima, I think that you did an incredible job. Well, thank you. Thank oh, you. If you're a guest on the line, um, please connect with the person that invited you to uh, get these products ordered, uh, to get more information, uh, to get other uh, links to our webinars. We would love, love to have you lock arms with us here at Wakana and to see all the things that we are doing here. Hey, Minister Mooney. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you so much, Yakima. I think that's it for this evening. If you want to give some closing remarks or um, share your uh, web, your uh, email, you can do that so that folks can connect with you as well. Oh, sure. I'd just like to say thank you for having me and I appreciate being able to share this information with you all. Thank and I See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. See you next month. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Uh, thank you to all of our business partners, all of our guests. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.